Okay, let's start with verse 30 in chapter 8 of Joshua. Melba brought this out last week when we were talking about the altars. And Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, over which no man hath lifted up any iron, and they offered their own burnt offerings unto the Lord, and sacrificed peace offerings. Now we see a type of Jesus here. Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. He was the stone that was cut out without hands that crushed the nation, the kingdoms of this world. He was that stone. This is a picture of Him. So what do we got to build the altar on? What is our altar? Our altar, the centerpiece of the altar is Jesus. Nothing less than Jesus, the cornerstone of our salvation. Let us build wisely thereon. Let us take heed and, and have some fear. Come to the Lord, uh, mm, working out our salvation with fear and trembling, calling on His name and having reverence for the altar that is established, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He lives in the altar. He lives in the altar of our heart. The scripture tells us to not rend our garments, but to rend our heart. Now, as I was looking at this, what would being touched with iron be? It would have to be man-made doctrines and opinions that become forms of religion that takes away from the glory of Jesus. It would have to be shaping it in some other way than the blood of Jesus. It would have to be coming for, for a touch from God and, and trying to earn it some way. It would be going another route other than Jesus. The stone cannot be marked. It has to be exactly the way God made it. It don't need my help. All I have to do is believe on it. Believe that it is sufficient and fall on it. Come to Him. Seek Him. Go no other way except Him. It's through Him. Let's go to Luke chapter 20. I'll make it as plain as I possibly can. Luke chapter 20. We want to get it to where it's not rocket science. We want it to just jump out at us. Luke chapter 20 verses 17 and 18. As we build an altar, the centerpiece of this altar would have to be the part that God provided. And he beheld them and said, What is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Now he's looking at the religious people. He's looking at the church and telling them, I am the cornerstone and you are rejecting me. I am what you need and you don't have the good sense to know you don't have me. I am what you need. Receive me. This is what he's telling them. And by the way, Jesus was talking about the sackcloth. Jesus told this same group of people, one greater than Jonah has come and has told you the truth of the gospel, that I am the Messiah. There's one greater than, than Jonah that has appeared and talked to you. And the people of Nineveh will rise up in judgment against you because you have not heard the voice of the one that God has sent to you, His only Son. They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes is what He told them. What is wrong with the church? Is He standing outside the door and knocking? Is he asking us to find some sackcloth and call on his name for our nation, for ourselves, for our family? Do we need to cut down the groves, the things that have kept us away from the altar, the, the things that, that take up our time to where we won't even uh, come to a set place? Mm -mm -mm. Whosoever shall fall upon this stone shall be broken. 
We don't hear a lot about brokenness in the church anymore. But he says if we fall on him, we will be broken. The only way we're going to change is we're going to have to realize that we got some things that need to be broken away. It will change us. You ever hear of the vine being pruned to make it bring forth more fruit? Some things are cut off. Some things that, that hinder. When we fall on the altar, we're leaving some things behind. We're talking to Him. We're bearing our heart openly to Him. Every time we come to the... And here's what... There was a time that, that people would come to the altar and they would get resaved. Is the time, you know, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about coming to the altar and acknowledging there's some things going on in my life that's hindering me from having what I want. I need to bring it to the altar and deal with it. Get beyond a positive confession about what I think is going to happen. Seek Him with fervency, intentionally, on purpose. Call on His name with weeping and with tears to know that I want to meet with Him. Do it on purpose, not by accident. But whosoever it shall fall on, it will grind him to a powder. Sounds like to me it's best for me to fall on Him. I need to submit to His calling and fall on Him. To fall on Him. <laughs> there when they went to Moriah, definition for Moriah means to consider, to discern, to enjoy, to gaze, to have an experience, to take heed, and to provide. Sounds like salvation to me. You look it in the face, you look at it, you examine it, you decide it's what you need, you come to Him and you experience it, and He provides all you need, abundantly above what we can think or ask. Sounds like a salvation experience right there. Come to Him, seek Him, and receive of Him. So we see that, that the altars were built and, and that rock that has to be a picture of Jesus. 